um, drive up. So when we look at this um, this this timeline here, what I really want to point out here is how this, these weather events have affected the market. So from 2005, which shows Hurricane Ivan and and even down here in, in Hurricane Katrina, uh, which we're all familiar with, on that period up until 2007, we were in what we refer to as a soft market. There was plenty of insurance available again, and rates were coming down. 2017 happened. We're all familiar with what happened in 17. We had Hurricane Harvey, uh, a little bit north of here, but locally. Um, and we also had Irma and Maria um, in that same year. 2017 was the record setting year for global catastrophic losses in the world. That year set us off on this trend of where we are now, and it has not slowed down. So again, if we look at this from 17 up until 2023, we've gone through a pandemic. We've had uh, civil un unrest issues. We just had wildfires in California, et cetera, and it has not slowed down. The other thing that, that we do look at it. You lost my control there. Break it. Right now. Okay, thank you. The other thing that, that I think is important to point out, so NOAA puts out this diagram in this report annually. This is the one from uh, last year. And what it's telling us here is, again, last year we had $18 billion plus weather events just in the United States. Again, we've got to think globally, uh, locally or domestically. But but I would like to point out, again, just when we think domestically, we especially down here in the South Texas region, we usually think about hurricanes. And we probably think of last year as we didn't have a whole lot of hurricane activity because we really didn't. We had Hurricane uh, Ian that did hit Florida um, late hurricane season along with those other two events, but they weren't real real bad events. But but domestically, there was $18 billion plus storms. Part of the report that they do put out to, and I'll draw your, your attention to the bottom here, um, from 1980 to uh, 2022, the annual average was just called eight, eight events per year. Um, over the last five to six years, we've averaged 18 of these events. So it just goes back to the original um, diagram that I did show that shows you over the last six or seven years, the climate um, activity and weather activity has not slowed down. And it's worse than we saw when we were in that soft market. And again, that's what's driving the market and driving what we're going to talk about tonight. Our strategy and options, uh, again, to reiterate what we discussed in December, uh, we were out to see our administrators of our districts in late November, early December, um, to have these preliminary discussions on where we thought we would be looking at. Uh, we're reviewing property schedules, making sure that's all correct, so we can have everything out to our markets by um, mid to late December when all the schools went on break. Hopefully have all our quotes back in our hands by the time everybody came back from Christmas break and then be in front of the boards um, talking about options and renewal discussions in January. That was pushed back a little bit. Um, fortunately, we did, you know, we're here in December to kind of give you guys a little bit of an idea of what we thought. Um, but we were pushed back on our timeline by about 30 days and it's being driven by the market again. So the market came to us after January. January 1st is when the majority of the insurance companies renew their insurance, their reinsurance. So the guys we buy insurance from, they're buying insurance on what they're insuring, correct? Um, so they renew those, majority of those contracts, one one of every year. They had difficulty renewing their own insurance contracts, which ultimately delayed their process of, of issuing the renewal quotes to our consumer here. Um, so that's, that's part of the reason we're a little bit later than we initially came and told you we would be here for discussions. Um, the, one of the markets, specifically Amherst, who is part of y'all's placement right now, they came out about a month ago and said, do not ask us for anything more than 15 days prior to renewal. Of course, that doesn't work in the public entity world. We try to explain, hey, we got to go be with administrators. We've got to get to boards. We've got to do all this stuff prior to the renewal. So two weeks would work for us. So fortunately, they have worked with us a little bit on the board dates and, and able to get us something two to three weeks out. And that's why we're a little bit earlier than, than they wanted to be um today um what we will look at are some options of deductible options uh, we understand that the district and no district or school or county or private industry has more dollars today to spend on insurance price of everything around the globe is going up and so we have to look at some different options so these are the options that, that we do need to consider and talk about they are very difficult discussions to have um, because the dollars are so large and the deductibles are significantly different than what we've looked at in the past 
Um, so when we look at this, this, this picture here, the far left column is currently where we are. Right now. So that's the current policy. Term. Right now we have a hundred thousand dollar AOP deductible. AOP stands for all other peril. That's everything other than fire, uh, wind, hail, and flood. So fire, lightning, theft, et cetera. That's the current deductible structure for those. We've got $100,000 for any wind and hail other than named storms, so tornado or hail storms, and a 2% deductible on our named um, storm coverage with $100,000 minimum. Last year, we had about $158 million in assets that the district was insuring. This year, we did come out and have our third party do a property appraisal to reevaluate the replacement costs on all the buildings. That has gone up to $180 million, which represents about a 14% increase in your valuations or on a replacement cost standpoint. Last year, we bought full limits of the whole $158 million, and our property premium was $917,000. Our casualty, which is our school buses, our vehicles, our board liability, our general liability, et cetera, was uh, called $92,000. And then our active shooter assailant policy was $4,300. There's three options that we that we need to discuss tonight uh, for consideration. Um, none of the options include what we would consider full limits again, and we're referring to these as loss limits. So two of the options, option one and option three, are the option to buy $50 million of coverage, and option two is an option to buy $75 million of coverage. The difference being between the three options is the deductible structure. So in option one, again, the AOP, all of the peril deductible stays flat from where we were last year. So not a big deal there. When we get to the wind and hail, there are changes. So again, last year we had 100,000. One of the options, or the options do give us a 1% subject to a minimum of half a million dollars for anything other than named storm. And then the big difference between option one and two and the third option is our named storm deductible of 5% versus 3%. Um, again, just to, to explain how this loss limit works, uh, the loss limit, the theory behind the loss limit is in the event of a catastrophe, we're not going to have a total of every building in the district. We might have a little bit of damage in every building, but the odds of us having every building total out completely and having to rebuild from the ground up are fairly slim. Um, it's a theory that we've used uh, for a number of years on the larger districts, such as CCSD, you know, they've got $1.5 billion of buildings and contents. They don't buy $1.5 billion of windstorm coverage. They buy $450 million. So it's a theory that we've used in the past in the bigger districts. With the way the market has constricted and the times we're in, it's options that we're now having to consider for our smaller districts. Um, so, again, the way that works is every building would be insured throughout the district, but all the policy is saying is we're not going to pay more than 50 or $75 million in one event. And again, like I said, the theory behind that is that we're not going to have a totality event of every single, all 180 million buildings go down in the district. Um, the other theory that we do look at is the industry standard when we do review loss limits is between 25 and 40% of what your total exposure is. So in y'all's case, we're talking about 25 to 40% of 180 million dollars. Um, the 50 million represents 28% of that exposure and the 75 million represents 42%. So both those options are within that guideline of what we look at industry-wide when we look at talk about loss of this. Um, see what else I need to point out. Um, again, pointing out again, our valuations. So if we look at option one, for example, um, the total cost increase is about 38%. Again, 14% of that is being driven by more valuations that we are insuring this year. So it's, it's, it equates to roughly a 24% rate increase that we reference across the board. No, I just said a lot. Is there any questions? Oh, yeah. These clippers on here. Yeah, those were the last two pages. I did include a copy of the property schedule in case there was any specific buildings that we wanted to uh, to address there. Currently, we have paper and memorial at replacement cost. I'm sorry, at actual cash value. Okay. Now, I do have a question for you. Yes, sir. If a hurricane, if the main storm comes through here, as it, it has, it's done in the past, and it's right up Highway 77 and goes through. And then three days later, so our storm's over, it's passed, it's gone, it turns around and comes back. Is that considered one storm or is that considered two? So the definition of an occurrence is 72 hours. Okay. 
So if it's gone for three days, we're starting the clock again. Yes, sir. Okay. The but you want to slow up and take it from here. Okay. The 32 million to 22 million jump in the insured values. Um, property values have done weird things in the last two years. What, what do you think? How do you, how do you determine the property value of school? Great question. So the, the first part I would say, the important part is we got to remember the difference between market value and replacement value, right? So we're talking more about uh, replacement value. We don't care about market value, yeah. right? And, and, and enough said. Okay. The replacement value has skyrocketed. Yes, sir. Well, it's, it's coming, yeah, back, yeah. coming back down a bit. And it may be that we can look uh, next year or something and we may we may find that. that yeah. Some of that. Let, me, let me tell you how. How we get those and how and what the process is about just so everybody understands. So we do part of being an ECAD CPAC program a member is we hire a third party named Edwards Risk Management. They also handle the claims for the program. They uh, they do the actual property valuations on every school, all 202 members in the PCAP program across the state of Texas. So not only do they have current construction data by region, um, of course, the price to build a school here in Kingsville is probably less than the cost to build it in the Dallas Fort Worth, right? All that's taken into consideration. The other tool that they use is an industry-wide software pro pro program called the Marshall Sweat Bag Appraisal System. It's the same system that we use in our office that TWIA requires us to use when we enter a building for uh, the Texas wind. And that, that system basically takes all of your construction data for each building, the square footage, the construction of the, uh, the roof type, et cetera, and it's plugged in, comes out with what the replacement cost of that value of that building is for the zip code that the building's in. And so there's there's those combination of those two methods is how they come up with these valuations. So it's not just a number we say, hey, I think we need to go up 14% or 10 or whatever it's there's a method behind that madness. Well, just these are these are my concerns, okay? Just speaking out loud and looking at this and knowing what 55 of the other clients are thinking and words and stuff like that. Um, five percent, five percent deductible is a very large deductible. Just for and I like to talk worst case scenario, right? Worst case scenario, we got a cap four or five that comes across Bath and Bay right across us, right? Um, five percent of your total value is the hundred eighty million is was called nine million dollars. So, if we take a five percent deductible again, worst case scenario, we have some damage to every building. The deductible is applied 5% of the value per location of those buildings, not 5% of the damage amount that will sustain, but 5% of what we have the building scheduled for on the policy, mm -hmm. which is 180 million. So that's a $9 million deductible worst case scenario. So it's not 5% of the demand made or the claim made? No, sir. It's 5% of what the value of the buildings are scheduled for. Of, of the damaged buildings or all buildings? Well, like, let's say we had one building damaged. Yeah. So, great question. Difficult one to answer, but the way the deductible is 5% per building per location. So, the issue we have is the high school is a very large location, right? Peter and I were talking about this the other day. We started adding up the values. We got 80 to $90 million of values there. We have damage to one building. They're going to apply the 5% to all the congregated values at that location. 5% of it's called $80 million is, I'm not good at math, but it's uh, two, two and a half million dollars. So a 5% deductible, um, in my opinion, is crippling to a district of the size. Um, the, the other part of that is this million dollar minimum that's being applied to those deductible structures as well. So right off the bat, we know the minimum deductible we have is a million dollars. Again, we could have one building damaged in an H storm and we've got a million dollar deductible. So we exceed that million dollar deductible. The 5% is really kind of out the window. 
Yeah. Wow. So you're you're self insuring almost for the first million dollars. But you've got three hundred of it potentially paid for right off the bat. It's savings. Correct. Three hundred of the nine million. So the three percent is roughly uh five point four million. So there's a call of four million part of the delta between the two. I was looking for the million dollar name. It's 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 worse than you got. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Now let me, let me make a point. If we did have complete devastation from the name storm, FEMA would kick in. And mm -hmm. uh, we were talking about this as well. It would take us a while to get the money, but but they're not going to let the whole school district go down the drain. I think we and we went through that process, and Spitz and I talked about this during Harvey and Ransas passed, Port of Ransas, and these districts. And yes, FEMA did step in, and yes, FEMA did reimburse for those deductibles, but that's a three to four year process. So, as long as our fund balance can cash flow those issues, because the first thing that you're going to get hit was is, is with that restoration bill, and those costs go through the roof very rapidly. Um, so if we don't we have that large deductible and there's not much collectible from the insurance company we're gonna to have to cash flow that stuff until people finally gives us the money back out of the other districts that you have how many of them have gone with five percent deductibles and how many with three percent deductibles i would say uh currently before this renewal year most people are at a three percent deductible right now Barring the, the the districts that are closer to the coast, the Port of Ranges, the Ranges Pass, those districts, they were already at five percent because they couldn't afford anything differently last year. Um, and I would say, knowing what I know today, um, either a they're going to have to buy less insurance than they did last year, dramatically less. I mean, nobody's going to be buying full limits again this year. That's just out of the picture, right? So they're going to have to buy a lower loss limit. Or they're going to have to go from that three percent to that five percent. Which option is that on the board? The one you just talked about? Uh, well, the three percent is, is a million six. Option three. Yeah, option three. Okay. okay. We can't go from a million dollar expense to a million six. Yeah. Then we can. Yeah. So I mean, you know, again, it goes back to everybody's risk tolerance is different, right? Um, I'm the type that I like to take more risk because historically, I know the higher deductible save more money, right? It's just you got to be ready in case you have that deductible because we can't predict what's going to happen, right? You know, um, they, we ought to get credit for the FEMA dollars. I mean, they should be indestructible if FEMA has considered them to be safe houses. So they should be counted against us. Are we going to discount? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, let me ask you a question. Why are we insuring? That's a good question. Well, okay, we've got, and we also have, we have, we have the domes, but then we built that, those auxiliary things around them, uh, which were not being uh, approved, which is the dome down so just for reference um i mean that's that's a lot of value yeah that's the gomez sports complex beam and domes a and b correct yeah there's 20 million dollars of value there yep but if we're considering going from 180 to 50 million anyway we're not ensuring Every single building, anyway. Well, you, well, you are, and you're not. So you're being charged a rate on every single building to get to that whatever premium you want to call it. So at the end of the day, like you and I discussed the other day, if we take um, pick option one for example, the rate on that, I think you and I looked it up here, was seventy cents. So twenty million dollars of value. I mean, that's costing you one hundred forty thousand dollars to insure those two buildings. So you're saying that if we took those two off the schedule that and we kept the $50 million loss on that, it could save us that much money? Yes, sir. You're still going to have your $50 million. It actually brings your delta closer together because we're going to go from $180 million to $160 million with $50 million of covers. It kind of helps you sleep better at night knowing that we don't have another $20 million on the schedule that could sustain damage. 
I, I don't have the construction knowledge to know if those seam the buildings are indestructible and if a storm came through it. I, I mean, I assume we're going to still have some damage. But at the end of the day, they're safe. They're safe houses, so they're they should be in the structure. That's where people go and stay yeah. if they don't have adequate housing and strong stable yeah, house. uh, they there's somewhere in this building there's it shows what they're rated at as far as safety, up to you know as far as the winds and and because they were there, uh, we were there when that tornado went through and it, it went right through, you know, and, and not any problems at all. Is there is there a way to if it's twenty million dollars worth of value to insure it for one million dollars just for the domes? <clears throat> it's all or nothing. No, no there, 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 I guess if it's on there, you got to do. I mean, if you put it on the schedule, you got to take the, the the value. Yeah, and the reason why is because when they look at a twenty million dollar asset and they say, "Hey, we're only going to collect a million of, of premium on a million dollars of valuation." Yes, the max flow or payout would be a million, but we're not charging much premium then. Right. And the loss can easily get there pretty quickly. What how how do we how does this affect our contracts with Boys and Girls Club and Casa or not Casa? Uh, hey, Casa. Yeah, with Clever and Memorial. Well, with with Memorial, at, at any time we can go back and. Um, renegotiate um uh but with clayberg we signed a three-year deal okay. and we didn't put anywhere near that increase in there because we didn't expect it like that. are these the only providers that you can get quotes from no sir great question so um this i'm not part of the process deal so again we're independent brokers um so we represent a handful of carriers Y'all's account was specifically sent out to about 30 different insurance markets, global markets, not domestically or local markets. Um, you know, if we looked at that list eight years ago, the list would have been about 50 of them. But back to my, my portion of on what the market is, we don't have 50 markets out there that are willing to write this kind of stuff in catastrophic zones that we're in. So, um, yeah, now I'm still working on it. I told Peter the other day, we'll get in that list and those market responses so he can see who declined, what the reasonings were, et cetera. So these were the only ones that submitted a quote? Um, no, so th that's a little bit misleading. Um, those aren't actually the insurance companies. So the property insurance, the way it would be structured this year is actually there's three different insurance companies that provide the 50 million or the 75 million. So if we buy 50 million, it's one carrier. If we have to buy the 75 million, there's two other carriers we have to put on top of that 50 to give us the other 25 million. Because there's not a carrier anymore that will come out and write it. $150 million of values on their own. Can you explain the difference between the provider and the actual bidders like Andrew's bid? Um, so when you when you when it says provider to CPAD, it's a program, it's interlocal driven insurance purchasing co-op is basically all it is. Um, we 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 go out on behalf of PCAT into the global market. Send your account out, market it through numerous, in this case, 30 different insurance companies, come back. Put that together and package it under the CPAT name so that we get these additional services of being a PCAT vendor. Property valuations. The uh, we also have a thing called agility recovery services. So it's a service that in the event we have a catastrophe, they come in and they provide generators, satellite connectivity, portable buildings, et cetera, to get your district operations back up and running. They're going to provide portable buildings for classrooms and stuff like that. But the, the purpose of the service is to get the district operations back up and running so we get our schools back sooner. So those are just some of the services. There's some additional services in the PCAT program, bus driver training. Uh, we went through some things last time. There's PCAT at university. Uh, driver training, employee training, facility service, the safe bus program. We talked about that last time. The house kind of house my driving stickers on the back of your bus, the bus driver of the year program. But the actual insurance companies is a company called Amrisk for the 50 million. On top of that, there's two other, one of them being RSUI, another one's called a company called Paragon. And I know that there's even some that have just dropped some that's curious. Yeah, so Amherst, for instance, so Amherst has been the gorilla in the market for the last 15 years, just to be honest with you. 
they're the ones that came out 15 years ago and they said, hey, we can insure a school for $200 million on our own. We don't need the rest of you guys. We'll throw up $200 million. Uh, they had the best pricing, the best deductibles. Uh, Peter and I were just talking about tonight. Back in 2016, they came out to us and said, hey, we'll sell your districts a three-year policy, rate guaranteed, no problem. We're running a three-year policy. That's how far the market's come since 2016. Now we're sitting here talking and they're going, hey, the maximum we're going to put out on one district is 25 million. And on top of that, we're not going to write anything on a barrier island or ranges on renewed. Um, and they're being selective on the rest of them too. So, I mean, the, the rate increases, there's about, we we personally in Carlisle have, um, call it 25, 26 districts that renew on March 1st, um, from all the way from Mathis to uh, Raymondville. Um, maybe I for probably, um, but um, those rates that we're seeing so far are anywhere between 35 and 80 percent increases, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. and then and then on top of that, the deductibles are doing this, and you're getting half of the insurance you had last year, too. It's a disaster. When, when we go, when we look at the coverage summary, that is one of your, so your page three, and I want to move back to page three. This page three that lists equipment breakdown and it shows a $5,000 deductible. But if we flip back one page to the additional property coverages, none of those have deductibles. Is that correct? Uh, they do. They're subject to the regular policy deductible. Those are what we call uh, property enhancements or supplements to the policy. So there's stuff on there that's built in that they do limit coverage on. I'm just going to throw one out just because it's caught my own. Fine arts, for example. If you have more than 25000 that's the maximum they're going to pay you. They want you to schedule those, for instance. So a lot of that has to do with either trying to limit the amount of coverage that they're going to pay out after deductible. Or there's another reason you can buy insurance in a different way for it. After the overall deductible. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So your nine million dollar deductible. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. We've got a lot of things here on the property schedule. Can I see buildings? I see a lot of things being used for education. And I don't think it's worth a whole lot, but there's there's a lot of little things like. Five rows of ten of t-shirts. Three or thirty-two hundred dollars. I mean, there's a lot. There seems to be a lot of those stores. Are we even for insuring all those things? Because they're not part of the education for the children. And and these are we're talking about stuff that we have to get running right as soon as the storm has passed. It's, and I looked at several of those things. We. It basically, it's peanuts as far as how much. Yeah, um, so I was sitting, I was sitting outside, here, might as well do something, right? So I added all that stuff up. It comes out to about $500,000 worth of items. That is $180 million. When you look at the rate you're paying on your property policy, that $500,000, it's about $3,500 in premium. But it's a great point. It's what we talked about in December that maybe we need to look at doing some of that stuff. The numbers are just so small on those items compared to when you look at the, the domes at 20 million or the high school property at 43 million. I mean, those are the, the big ticket items that are driving your premium. We have to enter our school buildings. Right. And I agree. So yeah. I'll figure out is how do we look at things that are essential mm -hmm. and things that aren't essential? And, and granted, I'd love to be able to. Right, insure everything. But are we getting to the point where we have to say what's essential to educating our kids and what's not essential? Now, the two domes, since the county does utilize them, are they insured by the county as well? I don't believe they I are. Know. I'm sure they're on our property. Yeah. Um, they, but but that's something to consider that would they, if FEMA doesn't, kick in right away, would the county step in right away and say, hey, we're going to repair them now in lieu of FEMA eventually giving the money since they're using them? I don't think they have the money to do more. Uh, but it, yeah, I have a feeling if a storm came along and substantially harmed those don't domes, there would be some Repercussions from FEMA. Um, there probably wouldn't be fake houses anymore. Um, and and 
it's easy to say, <clears throat> okay, forget it. Let's let's take them off and save this money. But that's storms, and they still catch on fire. The other option Chase and I discussed to reduce the cost was content value. Right now, the content value for the buildings, if you look, can you move to that yeah. page? I don't know if they're going to be able to see it. Right. So right here in this column, 17, 9, this is the percentage that is used to calculate the contents of each building. As you can see, some of them are 30, 25, 20. Some of them are a little bit lower. One thing that we could do is we could lower all of these across the board for contents to 15%. Um, obviously, if something's going to destroy everything, Mr. Glusing, you talked about what is most essential for, for educational purposes. You could make sure you repair all the buildings, fill them with some stuff, 15%, instead of as much stuff as what was there to begin with. That would be another way to, I think we talked about maybe eliminating $150,000 possibly from the premium um, as well. So when, when we have to approve this, when we, uh, well, we have to have a decision, I guess we don't have to approve it, we could go uninsured. But by the end of the month, when we come back, I, we need some direction on, do we look at some of these other cost saving things, like for instance, taking the domes off, take, move, uh, lowering some of the content values um, uh, when we bring it back to you for possible approval at the end of the month. Not possible approval. We had to, we've got to make a decision by the end of the month. So we can't afford to self insure, even for a short period of time. And it's not going to get any better. No, as far as I'm concerned, we're our part's done. I mean, yeah. we, we have, I mean, other than if y'all want to see a different option, and if you wanted to see an option for 35 million instead of 50 million loss limit or something of that nature, I mean, we can go get those options. But uh, I don't think anybody's interested in seeing a seven and a half percent ink storm deductible. Um, you know, that puts you at 12 to 13 million dollar deductible. So the only real ways to decrease costs or raise the deductible or buy a loss, a loss in it that's lower or do some of the things that, that Peter just addressed. Um, but lowering those contents values and stuff like that, again, it's not going to lower the premium for $500,000. The numbers aren't big enough. What did you say again, what PCAT cash is? That is your liability policy. So your liability and your property damage on your bus, your white fleet, general liability, the school board liability, et cetera. So in theory, getting the domes off would make sense from storms. But that's not the only parallel out there. No, but I can go to them and ask them what the credit would be to remove the wind coverage on it and keep the all of the apparel coverage. I think that's worth at least exploring. Okay. And then do you want us to run what it would look like to lower the uh, content costs as well so we can bring that option to the board? Yeah. yeah. Because I, I, I don't... I don't see any way, unless those two create significant savings, I don't see any way we can go with uh, a 3% deductible. Um, it's just so that cost would have Do you want us to also explore the possibility of a 35 million? Loss limit to at least bring it to you to see what it looks like, or is that too low? That's one of the though. Yeah, the, and you know, not aside from wind, just talking about fire, basically, it's a little fire. Then you kind of start looking and go, okay, what's the high school that you had? And it's yeah. been there for 40, 43 million. A fire could take out a building. Windstorm's not going to total no. and and Dr. Pitts in your assessment of the property 
take a hard look at admin because my guess is that you could well have a higher because of the, the I mean, isn't your data processing brains here? And 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 you may that one may be a little tricky. We actually have talked with Dr. Trevino about moving some of those brains to the FEMA nodes. Um, it hasn't happened yet. Uh, we're looking at getting more lines installed to and from the FEMA domes before we do that, yeah. but but that's what we're looking for in the future. Okay. But it's not current, obviously. How about all the portables? The the portables, I mean, they're they're peanuts compared to everything else that I mean. It's not going to make much of a difference. The, yeah. the big things are the, are the huge buildings and the contents inside of it. Those are what's going to be. I think there's about 800, 900 thousand. The thing about the, the, the portables is they're going to fall within the deductible regardless mm -hmm. um, if you have. So you're not ever going to get any kind of coverage on them. Um, <clears throat> so I. Chase, what is your assessment of that? Does it make sense to completely remove the portables? Because um, is that only for the name storm that you're going to get not ever going to get anything on them? Or what's well, your deductible if they burn? A hundred thousand per occurrence. Okay. So again, if we have one burn that's a hundred, if two of them catch on fire and they both burn, or three because they're side by side, it's a hundred thousand. And then just a freak wind storm or hail storm, it's one percent. Yes, sir. Tornado, hail, 70 mile an hour cold front. Yeah, and those happen. Yeah, yeah, sure, for sure. Anything other than a name storm. So anything other than trouble or trouble storm work. We had a wind storm a few years ago that did a little over $100,000 of damage. Unfortunately, we had to pay the 100000 deductible and we only got maybe 15000 on top of that. But if it would have done five hundred thousand dollars of damage, we would have gotten something. But not anymore now. You know, it's not any solace to us, but it's not unique to education. It's absolutely it's not. not. It could be on the the so so I mean, our agency thirty percent is public entity work, and the rest is hotel, motel, contractors, condos, you name it. This is not isolated to, to public entity business. Hotel motels are worse than this right now. I mean, they're frame constructed hotels that burn and blow away. You all actually have fairly good constructed buildings compared to that. Another district I represent, I saw a $2 million increase. Mm -hmm. $2 million from what was it originally? From two to four. From two to four? Wow. Mm -hmm. In the day, it's all relative rights percentage, really. Yeah, yeah, they have about they got a bigger bond balance. Yeah. <laughs> all right, guys, this is not an action item tonight, but it is going to be coming up real quick. Are there any other uh, on the twenty seventh? Yeah, we're going to need to, to make. Are, are there any other questions or comments about this? Each side of all we want to discuss it, but. Number <laughs> what's what's everybody's thought process on the 50 versus 75 million? Uh, I think either way you're not gonna you're not gonna be able to go find all of the we're going to have 75 minutes. So, I mean, I know there's a, a, a difference between the 50 and the $25 million difference, but at the end of the day, you can never ensure all your buildings in 100%. So, you know, we, we have, I, I think we just have to be good stewards when it comes to you know, taxpayer funds and having to dish out. Uh, you know, the, the difference is you're, you're increasing 360000 option one, 583000 from last year, uh, option two, and then option three, uh, just the ballpark of 780,000, which I get, it's common theme across the country, but 
nonetheless, I think we have to be just careful. When you know, those of us have been here for ever, um, you think about, you try to think about what's the worst we've ever seen in Kingsford storm. You heard King Allen? Yeah, and, and, and I'm trying to I'm trying to point to a building that sustained really bad damage. And I can't I, I remember Hurricane Allen in, in country uh, at the time I was living on monitoring road and everybody's barn moved down, got blown into the into the neighbors. But I don't remember any buildings. You know, you think about like they came Northway and, and uh, those buildings that have sustained, you know, through the years, churches, I, I can't think of any that that really got this. Now, that's rolling the dice. And that you could probably, somebody probably said the same thing about Ingleside, you know, five years ago. I don't know that ever gets going on. But, um, so to me, the likelihood of of fifty million dollars damage occurring would have to be at least two campuses, and I guess the ones that, that are the most I didn't look in here. But what is what is the high school and pet is added together? Uh, that to me would be the, the the most likely occurrence. Now you've also got kind of a straight line between Harvey and Gillette that that could. You know, I, I can tell you that when the radio station was operating, yeah. the entire time that it was operating, KI is one thing to fame that is the closest antenna to the coast that just blow down. Yeah, we've got a good 10, 15 miles between us and the coast coast. Mm -hmm. And we just, so, we're just not going to reach those limits on a hurricane. But where you can reach them is on a fire. Yeah. yeah. Or, or a tornado. Like, I mean, man, bad enough tornado could demolish the high school and wherever else it went in town, right? Yeah. And um, but, but I mean, I'll put it this way the, the two schools that we had the largest claims in Harvey were Water Rains and St. Rains Pass. And when I look at back at their claims versus the amount of insured value they had at that time, it was about 25% of what they had on the schedule. And those were pretty bad losses. Yeah. I mean, Water Rains hit it pretty hard and Rains is passing Ingleside and everybody. And at the 50 million, that's 28% of your 180 million. See, so, so it, 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 it looks scary. Well, it's scary being on the board and having a big how much sure. you're at your bank. Sure. Right? Yeah. <laughs> you don't want to not have enough at the end of the day, right? Yeah, but, but when we don't have enough, Nobody's going to be able to find this damn schedule. This <laughs> so we were trying to save $300,000. <laughs> <laughs> That's the problem, yeah. Um, uh, but I, I would also say that the boards that we've been in from already, which is not a whole lot yet because we just got our quotes, um, the three other ones are considering closer to the 25% loss limit and what they're, because again, they're like, that's, that's all we can afford. Yeah. It is what it is. And then we'll hope FEMA comes in and gives us another two or three million if, if we need it. And, you know, we're, we're hopeful that it is cyclical number high. Well, <clears throat> we're also sitting on the fact that if we're going to have a memorial, the roof's fixed on that and get rid of it. Where it can be occupied whenever we need to, I think that changes whatever we do for our rental contract. And people are saying, "Hey, we may need to take it back over, so we may need to have everybody show up." Yeah. Yeah. So we have almost a stretch loop. Yeah. Almost three. Speaking of that, I'd like. So direct to direct to the program. I mean, uh, Lamar and yeah, right. Brock. I don't know. No, okay, those are the same question. We don't want to get to the same thing. We don't want to get to the same thing. We don't want to get to the same thing. We don't want to get to the same thing. We don't want to get to the same thing. We don't want to get to the same thing. We don't want to get to the same thing. We don't want to get to the same thing. We don't want to get to
but we do have to talk to boys and girls son. The boys and girls but about we have to decide what we're doing with Clayburg and with with Memorial. Clayburg, we're locked in. There's no can do it. But it's going to come up again. We will. Mm -hmm. So we have to we have to maybe put some sort of uh, uh, emergency situation in there to say, hey, if we lose schools, we've got to be able to come back in. The other thing we need to consider is, do we want to keep Memorial and Clayburg on um, actual cash value? If we move them to replacement value, that's going to increase our um, our premium for sure. Or do we want to right now leave them at, I, I guess we could look at how much it would cost to. No, I think with, I think with Memorial is an easy one to me, it stays at cash value because there's, there is what there's probably less than 10% of the total facility actually being used at this time. And so to me, that's that's the easy. When you look at Clayburg, you know, we've got a, a contract with them to provide that we release this to them. But if if we were to put that at replacement value, that's going to jack that up. We're locked into a current lease agreement. And so I'm, I'm inclined to say no to that. And if an act of God comes and wipes out that building, that's a contract breaker right there. I mean, there's nothing we can do about that. That's a force majeure that, that uh, you know, I mean, I sorry, we, we, yeah, we'd have to hope. I mean, it's not like we maliciously ran them off or anything. Um, and, and it's just cost prohibitive for us. I think. Well, I think that this, if we do decide to save money or whatever we're going to need, I think this puts a little more heat on the fire from when we say the airline can close and the airline can repair it. I can say that we have to make sure that that building is ready to receive somebody to get used to it, even if we don't use it today. Yeah, the main thing I'm aware of is the risk. Yeah, you know, we're talking $2 million to fix the roof and memorial. Oh, and you say that, I, I, I had to laugh because I was there <clears throat> at the and there was a million back then. Yeah. And they put it off because they started getting it. We wait too long, we leave a million. <laughs> there's uh, barrels of that. Uh, that car was there. <laughs> <laughs> and if you're going to make a small that would be what the most of the repair would be to be on the roof. Yeah, that's a good kind of indicator. Right. Yeah. But, but how much money do they save us every year? All right, anything else? Okay, just to follow up with the announcements, each of you just were handed your LBB. I think it was Yeah, it just felt like it. I had, I, it came to me and thank you, Mr. Carla. Oh, that was thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So review that at your leisure. We will start scheduling some pieces of it to, to review, uh, specifically the board part probably come first. I don't know that we'll have time at the August 27th meeting, but I mean, February 22nd, 7th meeting, but we'll be doing very quickly after that. Um, for February 27th, we've got uh, an agenda coming together already. If anyone has anything, we all know the drill. Um, no, we can't wait that way. If, if we run into an audit problem, we may have to uh, financial. We we may have to call some kind of special because it's just a presentation and approval of the audit. Is that correct? That's correct. All right, and I don't want I'm we live streaming, and I'm sorry for the people at home that are fixing to hear what I have to say, but that that's kind of a rubber stamp type deal. They present it. And then we do about, I mean, we accept it and it, it, it goes. So if we had to have a special emergency, not emergency, but a special call meeting for that specifically, um, 
it, it, it should not be more than a 20, 30 minute meeting. Now, if we can get away with it on the 27th, I'd like to, if, you could, if, if they will accept it with the understanding that it was going to the board that very evening, uh, then, then that would be ideal. Uh, if, if that's going to get us into trouble, further trouble with TEA, uh, or it, it, this component of the first rate, it, it is, and it's a pass or fail one. So, yeah. So, if 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 it's absolutely necessary that we do that, we may have a um, called meeting just to have the the audit approved. Um, Let's let me keep the question. I'm worried about people going to the doctor. I mean, I don't know. Could, what does, we'll be back. 2.20, we said it was a holiday. Um, what about Thursday? Wait, there's a Thursday? Oh, for the audit? I don't know, maybe. 23rd. Um, I'll, I'll poll everybody individually. Um, it will be important that we have a form, but if, if you can't make it, that's understandable. Um, that will be a single item meeting just so that we, we, can, we can get that done. If you'll check with your person for availability, um, and, and then I'll, I'll give it to you tomorrow. Yes, we'll see if we can we can't iron that out. Okay. And and I'll get clarification of exactly when the audit will be ready to be presented. Okay. All right. That's all I have. If there's nothing else, we will officially adjourn the workshop at 8 11 p.m.